Hey there, this is your host, Dr. Lori Friesen, and you're listening to episode number 222 of Beginning Teacher Talk. Just because you're a beginning elementary teacher, there is no need for you to struggle like one. I'm dedicated to being the mentor for you that I wish I had when I first started teaching. In this podcast, we talk about all of the -the behind-the-scenes stuff about teaching you really need to know but didn't learn when you were in university. And we share the most amazing resources, tips, and strategies out there so you can become the teacher you've always dreamed of being. Let's start the show. You guys, we did it. This is my favorite number, 222. I don't know if you know that, but 222 is my absolute favorite number of all time. Why? I love the number two because it's never alone. I don't know why it's always been my favorite number. I love the number two. So when I realized we were coming to episode number 222 of the podcast today, I was like, oh my gosh. Like, I feel like I need to be doing something really special, or maybe this episode will go viral or something. I don't know, but it's just my favorite number of all time. And in fact, this is actually going to be a really cool topic to talk about during this episode because this is a topic that I cannot believe we have not talked about before. We're going to talk about ways to use timers in your PowerPoint slides, 15 ways that you can use timers in your PowerPoint slides to streamline and to improve improve your classroom management. And again, I can't believe that we've managed to get to over 200 episodes of this podcast and not talk about this topic. I mean, is there, there's like probably hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of topics that we did not learn in university and that we should be talking about on this podcast. I'm very curious about if I'm ever going to come to a week and go, I have nothing to talk about. It hasn't happened yet. <laughs> it just hasn't happened. So Using timers in your PowerPoint slides can be a complete game changer when it comes to managing your classroom. And it's one of those things that I think I always just assumed everybody did. So I didn't really talk about it until I realized that a lot of people have not been using them. So this will be a game changer for you. So inside the Ready for School Academy, I teach you all about how to set yourself up for success when it comes to the essential and foundational components of classroom management. But now that I'm working with teachers throughout the school year and developing the Classroom Management Club, which I've talked about before in the podcast, it's an experiment I'm doing with Academy graduates. We're working out the kinks. We're figuring out the best way to serve you. And there are so many other elements of classroom management that we need to talk about in terms of not just the foundational elements of classroom classroom management, but all of the tips and tricks and hacks and ideas that can make your classroom run so smoothly throughout the school year. Now, if you're wondering what I'm talking about when I mentioned the Classroom Management Club, again, this club is an experiment that I'm doing right now to find a way to support new teachers, not just at the beginning of the school year, but throughout the school year. And as I've launched and offered the Academy over the past several years, it's never felt quite right to me that I set you up for success for the school year through the Academy during the summer months. But then like midway through the school year, starting usually in October or so, I start hearing about so many teachers feeling very alone and feeling like they don't have the community of support that I had expected their schools to provide and that they need throughout the school year. And especially now, if you're listening to this episode as we're coming up on the Christmas break or the winter break, whatever your school or your district calls it, where you're from, this can be a time of the year when a lot of teachers are able to take a step back from what they're doing in their classroom. You've had a bit of a break or you're about to have a break and you're going to be looking for a more improved and a more streamlined way of running your classroom for the second half of the school year. So I thought this would be a perfect time to talk about how to use timers in your classroom, and really why I encourage you to start using them if you aren't using them already. So let's first talk about why they're so valuable. So first of all, if you're still using a kitchen timer, I don't know if you're like me, but back when I first started teaching, the timer I used and I relied heavily upon in my classroom was one of those red kitchen timers that I had seen my mom use when she got all of her supplies out every Christmas and spent about three full days doing her Christmas baking. I don't know if you have like super fond memories of this like I do, but bringing out that bright red timer always reminded me of making sugar cookies with my mom, listening to Christmas carols during the holidays. So I loved using my timer throughout the school year in my classroom. But 
I always lost it. I left it somewhere in my classroom every single day. So instead of relying on this or trying to find your timer, if you like, if you're like me, I left it somewhere around the classroom almost every day, just like my coffee mug, by the way. I seem to leave my coffee mug in all sorts of different places (laughs) around my classroom until I finally got a coffee cup warmer and got in the habit of always placing my mug on that to keep my coffee like actually hot. I could never find my coffee cup either. So And even though we're talking about timers today, just a little caveat here. If you want a special just for you gift this holiday season, I highly recommend that you scoop up one of those little coffee warmers for your classroom. I think they're like $10 and put it somewhere where your kids won't touch it, like on top of your filing cabinet. I cannot tell you how amazing it actually is to have hot coffee throughout the school day, especially in the middle of winter when I was teaching in Canada. I mean, it was a game changer. So I will link to my favorite coffee warmer in the show notes for this episode for you because it was a game changer, just like the timers we're talking about. Okay, so back to using timers in the classroom. Now, digital timers, rather than those little red ones that I used in my classroom are awesome, not only because you can't really lose them, they're embedded right into your PowerPoint slides, but they're also highly visual because they can help both you and your students stay on track and really learn the essential skill of time management. We're going to dive in and talk about some very specific ways that you can use these timers. But also students really like to know when an activity should be finished, right? So it really helps them to stay on task and to know how much time they have. It also really helps students practice when it comes to timed assessments. This isn't the first time they've seen a timer if you've used them in your classroom. And because they've had an opportunity to practice doing their work using timers, it can really help to reduce your student's stress during timed assessments when timers are just part of the way you do things inside your classroom. It's not new for them. Also, especially for me when I was a new teacher and I really needed extra practice learning how long lessons would take or when I needed a visual reminder to keep me on track, these visual timers can be a lifesaver. So when I first started teaching, I had to use an actual clock, but now with digital timers, life is so much easier because it's right there in front of you and you can easily change it up. They're also a great way to remind your students and you what your class is working towards because you can post the reward your students are working for on the slide directly beside the timer. Now, I'm a huge fan of whole class rewards because I find they really encourage cooperation and they help to develop a sense of community in your classroom. So I really encourage you to think about incorporating a whole class reward into your classroom management strategy and using this in tandem with your class timers. So I'll give you some examples of what I mean by that during the podcast today. But just as a quick example, if you have a timer on your slide for maybe two minutes and you've given your students a job to do in that two minutes, you can put beside it, we're working towards and whatever it is that you're working towards in your classroom, maybe it's a marble in the jar, maybe it's a pom pom in the jar, maybe it's a letter towards a game they're going to get to play, whatever it is that you're working towards, it's right there on the slide as a visual reminder. So kids know right away how they can be successful. So it can really help everybody to stay on task and on track. And I love using timers because This strategy is so flexible and you can use them in so many different ways inside your classroom. So let's dive in and talk about how you can use timers in your classroom to streamline your classroom management. I have 15 ideas for you. So if you're driving, please don't, you know, stop and write these down. But if you're somewhere where you can write these down, take a moment and just jot down even in the notes app in your phone, what some of these ideas are so that you have them on hand when you want to use them inside your classroom. Okay. So First of all, you can literally use timers for virtually everything throughout the school day embedded in your Google Slides. So as students come in in the morning, you can use them for Google Slides or for also your PowerPoint slides. So whatever kinds of slides you're using in your classroom, you can embed timers. So as students come in in the morning, you can have your welcome slide up with a timer on it, letting your students know how long they have to complete their morning work and their morning activities before you're going to start class or your morning meeting. That visual cue for them to know how long they have to complete it is often enough for them to see, oh, I have to get my work done in the next five or 10 minutes before we're going to start our morning meeting. And you have a list of things that the students need to get done in the morning when they come in 
on that slide with the timer. And then again, you can have a little visual reminder of, hey, we're working towards getting two marbles in our jar if everybody gets our work done by the time the timer ends. So right there, it's a very quick and easy way for your students to know what they're doing, how long they have to do it, and what they're going to be able to achieve or accomplish or how they're going to be rewarded when they complete their tasks before the timer goes out. So as I just mentioned, number two, you can have a visual display of what your class is working for on the slide. So like I mentioned, if you're using a marble jar or a Kachi being good jar or one of my seasonal weekly motivators where kids get to remove a piece of the puzzle and see what's revealed underneath to earn a reward, your students know what's going to happen if they're able to complete their work and their tasks before the timer runs out. Again, that visual incentive right in front of them is a reminder of what they're working for. Now, number three, as students come in after recess and lunch, you also can have your directions or the entry question or an entry ticket posted directly on the slide along with the timer so kids know how long they have when they, to come in and get settled and get on task. Now, fourth, if you're teaching virtually or if you've had to teach virtually, using timers to let students know how long they have before your starting class can also be a lifesaver so they can gather all of their materials and be ready when they need to be. So if you're teaching virtually, you can put one of these timer slides right up on the screen, share your screen and put yourself on mute and then go ahead and let the students see right away what they need to have ready and how long they have before you're going to be starting class. If you are doing inside recess or indoor recess, or if you're hosting lunch in your classroom, sometimes students need to eat lunch in their classrooms, you can put a timer right up on a slide in the classroom during lunchtime so students know how long they have to finish eating because it's really distracting, right? They're playing with their friends, they're busy, they're having fun. But if there's a timer right up on the slide that shows them you have 10 more minutes to finish your lunch. It helps kids to be like, oh my gosh, yeah, I need to finish my sandwich, even though I want to be talking to my friends. They still know how much time they have before they're finished their lunch. Or if they're playing a game at recess and it's indoor recess, they know how much time they have before they need to be packed up and everything needs to be ready for class to begin again. Now, number five, if you have a student who is absent and you share your slide deck with parents, it can really help them know how long the class had to complete specific tasks that you might have sent home for kids to catch up on when you have timers embedded right on the slides. That way your parents will know, oh, that probably took that class about 15 or 20 minutes to complete this activity. That's probably how long I can expect for my, my child to finish this activity as well. It can be hard for parents to know otherwise how long it might take their child or how much time they should expect for their child to take to complete that work. Okay, number six, group rotations. This is another way that I've seen a lot of teachers use timers embedded in their slides. So this is for group rotations whenever you're doing center work in your classroom. So the students can keep track of how much time they have to complete activities during group work when you put the actual slide with the timer up on it. So if you display a slide with the groups and showing which group is at each center, and then you start your timer, it's really easy for students to see how much time they have at each center. And then number seven, having timers built into your slides can alert you to when it's time to switch groups. And when you're working with small groups, it lets you stay on task so that you know, I have about five more minutes with this group before we're going to switch. Now, number eight, another way to use visual timers in your classroom is to help your students build up sustained, independent, silent reading time or individual work time or both. So reading independently, for example, for an extended period of, of time is a skill that really needs to be practiced. So asking, for example, second grade students to read independently for 15 minutes at the beginning of the school year is just not going to be something they're likely going to be able to do. They won't be capable of that from the start of the school year. But instead, you can use timers as a visual signal for kids to help them know how much time they have left so they can continue to remind themselves to stay on task and build up that sustained individual reading time. So you start with two or three minutes in the beginning and then let your students know in advance if they are able to meet the school, they'll earn whatever it is that they're working towards in your classroom. And once they're able to do that successfully, then work up to five minutes of sustained reading independently and then up to seven minutes or 10 minutes, but it's a skill that needs to be developed and timers can really help you to do that, especially when it comes to building up sustained independent 
silent reading time, or individual work time. Now, number nine, timers are also really great to use as icebreaker activities or as review activities. So for example, you could set a timer for two minutes and then challenge students in small groups to write down as many facts about a science topic you've been studying or comprehension questions about a story you read together. So anything that you really want to review with students, give them two minutes, challenge them in small groups to answer questions or to write down facts about a topic that you're studying. It just breaks things up. It's a little bit of fun and it helps students to review you act review facts very quickly that you've been studying. Or number 10, if you want an instant game to play with your students, again, no prep at all, right? Just set a visual timer and challenge your students either individually or in pairs or in small groups, however you want to do it in your classroom to, for example, make as many words as they can out of a seasonal word like January or Valentine. So it's just something fun and quick to switch things up. It gives them a little bit of an interruption throughout the day, different than a typical icebreaker or a typical brain break. But again, just using a slide with a two minute timer on it. Now, number 11, if your students are doing presentations in your classroom. Visual timers can also be a great way to help your students, first of all, practice their presentations. So if you're having students practice in small groups, they can be using timers to practice staying on track and knowing how much time they have left in their presentation. And then that way, when they finally come to the actual presentation itself, it isn't brand new to them. They know pretty much how much time they're going to need and how much time it's taken them in the past to do this presentation when they were practicing it. So it isn't as like scary when they get up in front of the class and have to do this within a certain time frame. Same thing as we talked about just before, when you're practicing for assessments, so many of our assessments are timed now that if they're practicing using timers in your classroom throughout the day and using them for different activities like games and like, like icebreakers then, and presentations, then when it comes to times of assessment, students will not feel as much anxiety around assessment because they're used to using timers in different areas and different parts throughout the day. So number 12, you also want to use timers for your end of day cleanup or for art cleanup. Anytime that you need to do cleanup in your classroom, timers can be a game changer, right? It's anytime that you can challenge your kids and turn it into some kind of a game, you're going to win, right? So just post your expectations on a slide for what clean looks like in your classroom. Be very specific. Does it mean that there's anything on the desk? Does it mean that there's anything under the desk? Does it mean that the supplies are put away in a certain space? What do the supplies look like? All of those things. Be very specific. Review your expectations with your students for what their goal is and then set a timer and let your students know in advance what they're earning and encourage them to work together to achieve the goal. So you can say to them, okay, you have five minutes. Here's what it needs to look like by the time we're done. And if we we can do this together, we earn X, Y, Z, whatever it's going to be, marbles in the jar, pom-poms in the jar, um, the seasonal motivators that we talked about, whatever it is that they're working towards, points on a hundred chart. I don't know what you're doing in your classroom right now, but review that with them and then tell them, okay, you have five minutes. I don't know if you can do this, but let's see if you can. Ready, set, go and let them do it. Let them know in advance what they're earning and encourage them to really work together. Okay, number 13. When we think of using timers in the classroom, we typically think about using these to help keep our students on task and on track. And that's what we've been talking about mostly in this episode today. But if you're working on keeping your lessons, you're, if you yourself are working on keeping your lessons under a certain amount of time, so for example, during Writer's Workshop, I tried to always keep my mini lesson to five minutes or less so that most of our time was spent with students actually writing rather than me taking a whole bunch of time teaching a lesson. So if you're working on this in your classroom, you might consider setting a timer for yourself for five minutes, for example, so that you know that you need to complete or wrap up your mini lesson in five or six minutes tops. And your students are really going to appreciate this because sometimes we don't even realize how long our lessons are going. Teachers are notorious talkers, right? And that can result in classroom management issues when we can't figure out why our students can't sustain their attention during our lessons. So if you're having a tough time with spending too much time talking, like I did when I first started, <laughs> and you're not leaving enough time for your students to actually do the work you need them to do, 
then setting a timer for yourself to help you practice this skill is not only super valuable in terms of giving you a strategy for improving your own teaching, but it also shows your students that you value their time and that you're working on improving your teaching practice for them. So I love timers, not just for my students, but for me as well to help improve my teaching practice. So that might be something you might want to try. Now, number 14, if you do decide to use timers in your classroom, you might also want to get a PowerPoint clicker. I don't know if you've seen these before, but they are really cool. You can remotely control the slides and your timer remotely. So if you're working, for example, with a small group at a table across the room, you don't need to go all the way back to your desk to reset the timer for the next center rotation or to move to the next slide. You can literally just use your little clicker and then you can move on to the next slide. So I'll link to the one I love in the show notes for this episode. They're super cheap. I think they're around $20, but it'll really save you in the class from having to be right beside your slides all the time. And finally, number 15, it's a great idea to use timers that have a sound at the end so that you're alerted when the timer has run out. So if you're anything like I was in the classroom when I set a timer, it would be like three minutes after the timer had already run out that I actually noticed that it had run out of time or my students would be like, um, this is freezing. Like the timer went off like a long time ago. So if you're anything like me and you need a little reminder, you might want to choose timers that have a sound that alert you like a bell or a notification notification when the timer has run out. Now, I just finished creating some fantastic timer slides for each of my classroom themes, both Farmhouse Chic and Chalkboard Brights and Succulents is going to be coming soon. I don't know if it'll be out by the time I release this podcast. So if you're part of my classroom management club, you will get those slides as part of your January bundle of resources to help you with managing your classroom. But if you're not part of the club yet, because it's only open to Academy members right now, watch for these slides inside my TPT store because I'll be releasing these timer slides very soon soon for you. So be sure to check the show notes for this episode, episode number 222, or visit my Beginning Teacher Talk TPT store to check out these timer slides very soon. So you're going to get more than 50 slides in each theme, and you can insert one of 10 timers into each slide. So you can choose from a one minute timer, a two minute timer, three minute, I think there's five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and 45 minutes. So that way you can add whichever time you need into each slide and you can customize them in so many different ways. You can add text, you can add, change any of the text, you can change whichever timer you want inside each slide. It's really cool. And I'm giving you slides for everything that you would need throughout the day, from welcome to the classroom slides to slides for after recess and lunch, transition slides, break time slides, getting ready for home, and slides for every single subject in your classroom, in addition to like many other ones. I'm not even sure. I can't list them all right here. And again, you're getting editable designs as well, so you can create anything that you need. You just need PowerPoint and QuickTime Player to be able to use these slides. So again, you can check out these slides inside my TPT store at Beginning Teacher Talk, or if you're part of the Classroom Management Club, you'll be getting these slides as part of your membership. All right, my friends, I hope that was helpful for you today. I hope that you have a wonderful week. And until next time, remember, just because you're a beginning elementary teacher, there's no need for you to struggle like one. Bye for now. Thank you.